update. My male 27 wife, female 26, lost her job after leaving early numerous times out of concern for her friends, female 26. Mental health after her miscarriage. But when I tried to talk to her, she made me out to be the enemy. Original post. My wife and I have been married for three years and we don't have any kids at the moment. We want to have kids in the near future, but as of right now, my wife is really struggling and I don't know what to do to help her. My wife Liz has a best friend Lauren who she's known since high school, but ever since two years ago, Lauren has been going through a lot. Lauren had a miscarriage a couple of years back, and Liz told me that it was one of the things that led her to eventually divorce with her husband. Lauren was depressed for some time, and Liz would come over after work to comfort her and get her out of the home. And she even said that Nick, Lauren's husband, had asked her to do so too since Lauren wasn't being receptive to him. Nick would pay for activities for them to do, such as movies or concerts, and I would pay for some as well. I didn't know Lauren especially well, but after inviting them over for dinner a few times, I felt like I began to know them more too. But when Lauren would tell my wife about how Nick would try to offer to do things with her too, Lauren would usually refuse them and his suggestions to splurge on herself, to do her hair and make herself feel nice every once in a while. Liz tried to tell her that while she'll be there for her, that she should also confide in her husband to do things with him too. But she said that Lauren just felt guilty among other things. And there were a handful of fights that they had too. Fights where Lauren would tell Liz that she erupted at Nick for suggesting activities to her that she didn't want to do. Fights that Liz honestly felt that Lauren was in the wrong about because she was constantly resenting him. One of the fights happened when Nick brought her flowers and offered to take her out to dinner for her birthday, only for Lauren to snap at him because she wasn't in the mood. When Liz asked if he had already purchased the reservation before asking her, she said that he didn't and that he should have known she wasn't in the mood, and she refused to take the flowers too. The other fight they had was about a vacation week that Nick was planning to use, but when he asked if she wanted to go, she gave him an attitude about not wanting to. So, when he said that he would use the PDO later in the year once she was feeling up to it, she got on him for not asking his friends instead. But when he said that he wanted to spend it with her, she just went off at him and told Liz about it too. Fast forward some time and Lauren and Nick are no longer together. Lauren's condition has worsened and it's taken a toll on my wife who has continued to spend time with her after work. I'm all for supporting her friend, but I believe that there's a point when you must also prioritize yourself. And in the beginning, my wife would be tired after going straight from work to Lawrence to comfort her, both during the miscarriage and after their divorce. But now, as Lauren has continued to struggle more than a year after the miscarriage, and refused Liz's suggestion to try therapy, once with her husband and even after the divorce, Lauren has begun to make concerning statements about feeling like she might end it, and other stuff like that. And we were recently having lunch with another couple we know where Lauren texted her something similar, and Liz couldn't enjoy herself. I totally understand that. And on that day, she expressed that she needed to leave to make sure that Lauren was alright. And this was towards the first few times that Lauren began saying that. However, while driving away, Liz called Lauren who then said she didn't mean it. And Liz was somehow able to make her feel better on the phone to the point where it was unnecessary for her to come over anymore. So, while I was relieved but not completely convinced that she was fine, I told Liz that maybe she should go over just to make sure. But Liz said it was fine. And I trusted her with that since she knows her better. However, I also told her that while Lauren is her friend, she can't let her weigh her down when she's enjoying herself. Like at lunch or other times we had plans and sacrificed them to be there for Lauren. And that if Lauren refuses to get help time and time again, there's only so much you can do. And you still have to live your life. And while she said that she agreed in a moment, it's gotten a lot worse the past few weeks at work. To the point where she lost her job. And I'll try to explain why. Ever since the day when Lauren said she might end it at lunch, my wife has stopped telling me about the specifics like she used to. And while I understand that she never had to include me in the complicated details between her and her friend, it started to affect her at work consistently, to the point where she's left work early to check on her over-concerning messages that she no longer wants to show me. But I only found out about it because she was fired. She had a full-time job, but after she was fired after several warnings and nights where she'd come home and be distressed while not telling me why when I asked, she finally told me that she's been leaving early to visit Lauren. It finally showed me a bunch of similar messages to end it from the other day, and she's really been affected by Lauren's condition a lot. However, I told her that's not an excuse for the lack of communication, and I told her that over the past few weeks too, ever since she started to somewhat ghost me at home for apparently what I said after the lunch. She showed me messages that pretty much proved she was going over there, as well as many calls that happened in her car during work hours too. 
However, we have bills to pay. And while I figured that maybe she was just down as trust from work when she wants quiet, she began blaming me for Lauren's condition of late and saying that I encouraged her to neglect Lauren when that's not the case. I told her I don't think Lauren is a healthy friend because she's always affecting her mood even when they're not together. Not to mention how she refused to seek therapy or better herself over a year since the miscarriage. However, she now sees me as the enemy because of those comments, and I don't know how to make her stop ignoring me if late again. I felt scared to tell her not to see Lauren anymore after we left the luncheon, because of the possibility of cutting off Lauren's only support, and having her maybe do something like she said and having that on my conscience. But I'm starting to second-guess myself after everything that's happened, and I just want to ask what I should do from here since she's not talking to me, and thinks I'm not supportive of Lauren's condition, and I really feel like I'm losing her. From not eating dinner with me to not talking to me for long stretches, she sees me as the enemy and I don't know what to do. Top advice before reading the update. You need to be brutally honest with your wife. She is not helping Lauren. She is enabling her. And the way she is going about enabling her is wrecking her own mental health. Has wrecked her job and is on its way to wrecking your marriage. That what Lauren is going through sucks hardcore. But your wife is not helping by allowing this to continue. Tell her that if she doesn't believe you, then she should speak to a therapist herself to find out what is an acceptable level of help versus what is enabling someone to not deal with their own problems. Tell her that the next time Lauren sends a text threatening self-harm, she should immediately call emergency services in Lauren's area, tell them she's made a threat to hurt herself, and that she'd like them to do a welfare check on her. Then she needs to tell Lauren that she will help emotionally support her while she starts therapy, but that therapy is a must for your wife to continue supporting her. If your wife won't draw a line, you may need to draw a line yourself, before your wife lets Lauren drown all of you. I completely agree with you. And when I told her that she can't let Lauren's text suck the life out of her when she's enjoying something like the luncheon and quickly ruin her mood by demanding to leave, I was afraid to be more adamant about staying in case something did happen with Lauren, which would make my wife resent me for a long time. I regret that now. And while I did kind of say what I meant the same day, I should have been more adamant about it, and I was wrong to say it lightly. I recently told her that Lauren was also wrong in some of the ways that she began to neglect her husband, who was trying to comfort her too, along with how Liz isn't a replacement for Lauren's husband. I didn't want to come off as controlling, and I was afraid of something happening after putting my foot down too lightly after the luncheon. But I agree with setting the boundaries for going forward starting from now that you mentioned if she'll be open to hearing them. And if not and she continues to make me the enemy, then I'll take it from there. I've been in your wife's position before where I somehow became the only support for a friend who was very mentally unwell. It was making me miserable, but I was too focused on keeping her safe to see it. My partner kept telling me it wasn't healthy and I kept ignoring him because she needed me. For me, the realization came when I was very ill and couldn't get out of bed and somehow still ended up on the phone with her social worker trying to assess whether she needed an ambulance slash mental health crisis team while she was nonverbal and communicating with me solely in cat emojis. I realized that I was putting myself at risk for a relationship I got nothing out of because she never supported me when I was also struggling. She sent me a message the next day apologizing that I responded saying that I was unwell and had too much on my own plate to be the person she turned to for support right now. She immediately blocked me on everything, and we haven't spoken since. The point I'm trying to make is that, in my experience, you telling your wife that this relationship is unhealthy and damaging her life is not going to get through to her, because it is so hard to get over the idea that you are the only thing standing between this person and death. It is so hard to let go of the belief, which is not true, by the way, that if you set boundaries and they actually do it, even if you know the chances of that are tiny, you'll be responsible. Essentially, she's now putting you in the same position for her, as she is in with Lauren. She is going to drag you down with her unless you set your own boundaries for how much of this you will tolerate. Maybe therapy or divorce will be the thing that snaps her out of it. Maybe it won't. But you can't spend the rest of your life catering to Lauren when she refuses to help herself. I'll ask her about therapy again despite already trying once, only to be ignored. I offered going together or even alone for her, including encouraging her to suggest it to Lauren too. But after I said what I said about how Lauren has become too demanding, she's seen me as the enemy since and has been unwilling to talk to me in my own home, not to mention showing no plan to look for new jobs or file for unemployment and expecting me to pay the bills after saying that I can't afford it while she recovers, which is just another bag of worms. I'll ask her again to see if she'll be willing to talk about therapy and where we go from here. But given her silent treatment, I'm not confident that she'll want to talk at all. 
And if she doesn't, I'm thinking that that might be her answer in being done with our relationship. And now for the update. A lot of people said that the proper word that describes her relation to Lauren is codependent, and I honestly agree. Some suggested that I leave for a few days to take a break and think about what I'm getting out of the relationship post Lauren's miscarriage that sparked a dramatic behavior change in my wife. However, the suggestion that I decided to follow was talking to her once more and telling her where I stand and seeing where we both stand on the matter. So that conversation is why I'm updating. I echoed what someone said about how Liz could be enabling Lauren from wanting to seek therapy when she knows that she can call her at any time. And I also told her that lying by leaving early was wrong too. I also told her that we needed to discuss her next job, but she said that she'll get it when she wants to because it's my fault that she had to sneak around in the first place. And she also disclosed something new. She said that she is an empath and that she and Lauren are pretty much the same person. So when I criticized Lauren, I was criticizing her. She also said that I am someone who doesn't prioritize mental health because I criticized Lauren and that if she hadn't lied and sacrificed her job to be with her, Lauren might not be here and it would be my fault. So she said that paying for the bills was the least I can do because I don't care about Lauren at all, completely forgetting how I cooked for them numerous times and bought the movie tickets among other things, and sometimes with my own money too. Before I could even say more once she got started, she said that she's been talking about me to Lauren a lot and that I'm no better than her ex-husband and that she wants out and there's no changing her mind. Honestly, when we were going to talk, I wasn't expecting her to lay into me like that. I didn't expect it to be roses but I really didn't expect her to get at me like that. I've been depressed myself lately and trying to push through, but we are in the process of getting a divorce because that's what she wanted, and I've also taken some time off for myself too. I've just started therapy, but the divorce process hurts and still hurts honestly. But that's pretty much it. I'm back working, but it still hurts. I'm playing a lot more games than I usually do at home, and a few of my friends have been really comforting, but it hurts. I don't want to ask for any advice on moving on from such an ugly end to everything if anyone has any suggestions. But that's pretty much it. She was done before I could even get that far. I'd even push for counseling together like someone else suggested too. Hey, I remember your first post. I'm really sorry that things ended up going down this way. I was afraid this is where this was headed. She was in deep into the codependency and enabling, and they were clearly co-poisoning each other's heads about marriage and husbands. Know that there is nothing you could have done differently to prevent this outcome. Your wife has a mental health issue. Codependency is a mental health issue, and it parallels addiction in many ways. Your wife's mental health issues led her to choose an emotionally unhealthy relationship where she felt needed, over a healthy one where she didn't. You cannot blame yourself for being healthy. That was not a fault. You are young and you will bounce back from this. Let yourself feel your grief and anger. Those are normal things to feel right now. Invest your friendships and hobbies. Do what you can to make time pass, even if that's video games, but try to make sure you're socializing and exercising too, so you don't fall into a trap where you neglect yourself or your life. I'm so sorry you went through this. Try to push through it while also working on some other aspects right now too. Would love to find some new hobbies as well. She also began telling some of our mutual friends about me being against mental health as well, so it's been weird with some friends, and some who wanted less to do with me since. So I'm trying to start over and maybe find some new ones eventually, which seems easier said than done at the moment, but hopefully soon as I have few good ones right now. Obviously you aren't against mental health. You're against enabling behavior, being codependent to the point where you lose your job, and untrained people pretending they are therapists. You know there's always some bleeding of the friendships when a divorce happens, and people make unexpected choices, but make sure you get your story out there and counter the false narrative. Like, make sure people know your wife was literally fired because she wouldn't stop enabling this friend and wasn't capable of drawing healthy boundaries. Well, your ex-wife and her best friend are made for each other. If it's any comfort, those two are not going to lead happy lives. They were friends long before we started dating going back to high school, so perhaps there was no coming between them at all. She knew Lauren before she met me too. I've told a few friends my side, and some have stayed with me. It's just insane how fast everything changed. Your marriage was lost when she uttered, before it was us, it was them. I'm so sorry for your man, but I strongly recommend therapy for yourself to help deal with all this. Also, stand your ground on the house and everything. She threw away the marriage, not you. Recently started, like very recently. What hurts more now is just the loss of friends who she was able to convince to her side, or maybe told them a different version, I don't know. 
I lost one good friend or someone I thought to be a good friend, and maybe they'll come back. But it would have been cool to help me find stuff to do, although I have family and a few others who can help with that. But it hurts for now to friend's part. I'm so sorry, but this may be the best outcome for you. Your wife was lost to you long before this. Now you can work on your own mental health. You can move forward without distrust and worry of an absent slash toxic partner. It's just crazy how fast everything happened over the course of a little over a year.